Hi, this is James Franco, and I want to wish the Teddy Award a very happy birthday. Over the last years, James Franco starred in several gay-themed movies, like Interior Leather Bar in 2013. He played very prominently a gay or ex-gay character in I, Michael in 2015. And he also directed a movie with a gay topic, The Feast of Stephen in 2009, for which he won the Teddy Award for the best short film. Therefore, the Teddy Award did an interview with James Franco and wanted to know why he supports the depiction of gay life and gay characters in his movies. Um, there are many reasons um, I've, I've been involved in these, these projects. Um, some two others that you didn't mention were um, Howl, um, where I played the poet Allen Ginsberg, who was, um, you know, uh, very vocal um, gay voice. Uh, and I also played the, the poet Hart Crane, who was um, a gay poet in the 30s, died, at, died or in the 20s and died, um, died in his early 30s. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll play a role like, like those poets um, because I'm interested in their their art and, and their entire life, and um, they happen to be gay, and that's, you know, part of who they were. Um, and so as an actor, I, you know, I, I, I take that on. So it's not as if I chose those roles just because I, I said, oh, I, I must play a gay role. I, those roles were, were chosen because um, I appreciated their art. Um, in other cases, like Interior Leather Bar or I Am Michael, um, the main, you know, the, the, the central themes and reasons for making those projects were centered on um, um, uh, gay issues or um, queer issues. And I've found as a creative person um, that often these queer issues in in cinema um, and and in other outlets are great ways to explore new ground, to question how we live, to um, for me to question my own ways of, of living um, that um there is indeed a sort of um normative way of making movies and telling stories and presenting ourselves to each other that can always use you know questioning and um movies that will chip away at that very solid um um, traditional way of doing things. Mm. Well, you said that those queer themes can also question how we live. Would you also say that it can question, well, it, identities or, for example, also male identities? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm male, so I suppose a lot of the projects that I am um, involved in um, deal with male identities, but I'm, you know, it's not to say I'm not, I'm not interested in, you know, in, in um, themes and, and stories that involve female um, characters as well, but um, um, identity is one of the things I'm most interested in and how identities are formed um, and um, what makes us who we are and... Um, and how how the you know how how those identities sort of fit into the world. So the 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 project that I um, won the Teddy for was a, a short film called The Feast of Stephen that I did um, when I was a student, uh, a graduate student at NYU, and that is a is a movie based on a poem by Anthony Hecht called The Feast of Stephen, and I used it to really explore a lot of these 
themes of identity that we're talking about. You know, it's about a young man who um, has certain fantasies about, you know, some of his peers and they punish him for it. Um, and so it really is about, you know, young desires and also sort of the dangers of letting those desires out into the world or letting those desires be known by others because um, not everybody is, you know, understanding. Now that we're already talking about the Feast of Stephen, um, well, in the end of the movie, the main character actually looks into the camera and he smiles after he has been bullied. And I was wondering if that also might have been quite controversial because what we see before is uh, quite heavy bullying. I mean, they're basically beating him up and then he smiles into the camera. Right. Yeah, that was a complex moment. Um, the movie, at the time, I was very inspired by um, the films of Kenneth Anger, um, especially his film Scorpio Rising, where he filmed a gang of real, a real biker gang in the 60s that, that did not identify as a gay biker gang. They, they, I think, identified as a very macho, straight biker gang. But the way that Kenneth Anger filmed them transformed how they were presented. So in the film, they come off, you know, very queer. It's very um, homoerotic and the camera caresses their bodies. And, um, and I really, I was, I was very inspired by the way that, that Kenneth Anger transformed them just by the way that he presented them. And so the final moment in my short film, The Feast of Stephen, is meant to be something in of in in that order or uh, of you know doing a similar thing meaning it's not obviously it's not a movie that um condones bullying or is you know saying um you know maybe bullying is okay in some circumstances i i am <laughs> i'm completely against bullying but Within the world of this movie, in, you know, the movie is not the real world. The movie is, you know, its own sort of artistic realm. It was a way to have him smile at the end was sort of a way to give him that Kenneth Anger um, control or agency over these other people that um, had meant to do him harm. Hmm. Well, because I wasn't sure when I saw this ending if it was an act of empowerment, as you just described yes, it, yeah. or if it was an act of masochism, because that was the other. Right. Act. I mean, I, you know, I suppose, you know, I suppose um, there's a bit of both in there, um, but um, I like to lean more towards the empowerment. Um, not to say that if this, you know, these events were completely literal, that this would be, you know, the way that I think they should be played out. But within the sort of short poem of a film that I've done, um, it gives it a it gives it a twist. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about, well, the binary of being gay and being a macho and how this can be combined or not combined. Um, and well, this is a question. I sort of had when I was watching I Am Michael, like what society expect of gay people, what to look like, what queer people should look like. And so I was wondering what is the connection between sexuality and masculinity in the American society and also in the depiction of both in cinema? Like is it seen as something that cannot be combined, like masculinity and homosexuality? Um, it seems like that is is definitely changing um, as more and more queer stories are told where we get more varieties of representation and um, you no longer need to present you know gay characters or 
characters from the LGBT community um, in a specific way. You know, as we all know, there's, you know, many different kinds of personalities and um, it, it, within that community. And the more stories that are told about that community, you know, um, the more we can see, you know, you know, uh, masculine queer characters or, you know, whatever kind of variety um, we might think of or find in that community. Um, do you want me to talk about I Am Michael? I can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I Am Michael is a was a very interesting film because um, it tapped into many top topical issues of um, identity and um, uh, choice or um, or or the 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 it really kind of tapped into the debate about you know is identity genetic or is it choice or a combination of of these things but it did it from the opposite direction than we normally see or we would expect in a in a in a film that is made by you know a gay director so in this film you have the character instead of you know starting in the closet and coming out of the closet you have a character who identifies as gay not only identifies as gay as a huge supporter of gay rights and gay youth and you know he's a, he's a it's based on a real guy who you know traveled around the country and spoke to um, st students in high schools and just to let them know that they weren't alone and um, and then made this drastic change in his life and um, eventually identified as straight and became a Christian minister and um, like I said, you know, it, it, the film was directed by just written and directed by Justin Kelly, who is um, a gay writer and director. Um, so the film is not a you know pro conversion film, you know, it, um, but it uses this character's journey um, as a way to touch on these issues of identity. Hmm. Well, I also didn't read it as a pro-conversion movie, rather about, well, yeah. rather I had the feeling that it was a movie about a very personal story and you could also always see how he was fighting with himself a lot. Um, but what I was also wondering was if there well, was... What I, find, what, I, what, what I found interesting is that it seems like m most people I talk to will still question if he is gay if even though he's identifying as straight they'll you know many people will still question well yeah but he's he's actually gay and he's lying to himself right whereas i find fewer people questioning you know, characters that, or people that come out of the closet who sort of identify as straight when they're younger and then when they're older they come out and they identify as gay, I find fewer people saying, well, no, he's really straight, like, um, he's lying to himself, he's not gay. I, I just find, I find that the, um, that we have a sort of prejudice when it comes to, um, the order in which we um, sort of shift our identities. Hmm. But don't you think that also has to do with the acceptance of homosexuality and heterosexuality in the society? That yeah, I totally agree. And so it's, it's a really, it's really just a way to sort of examine how you know where we stand at the moment and um, and sort of a general kind of views about. Um, about these different identities, yes. I'm in total agreement. But would you say that the movie also contains criticism against the gay society? 
I mean, you already talked a little bit about it, that a lot of people questioned that he was straight now and that it was rather about, um, well, that they wouldn't accept it, that he identified himself as straight. Um, so I wondered, is, is that also a way of criticizing the gay community? Of no, no, not at all. I, I, no, um, I, don't, I don't follow. Because, you know, I'm, I'm not even, I'm, I'm saying people, you know, I'm, the people that are questioning I'm saying are, you know, straight people in the straight community, people in the gay community. I, I, um, I don't know why that would be a criticism. No, I mean, in sort of um, showing people their own borders in their minds. That also this yeah. is a possibility. But I think those borders, um, those borders are very, you know, I think they're very general. I mean, I think they, I think those, I think it, I, th it seems to kind of, you know, I, I found people in both, both people that identify as gay and straight questioning, you know, um, his um his idea you know if, if he is actually straight hmm. okay um well i have i have another question about the teddy award that you won um well it was a few years back and well you're starring in in big movies in hollywood you are world known and i was wondering did that actually have a significance for you to win the teddy award does the teddy award have or does it get any recognition in in Hollywood or in the independent movie scene in the United States? Um, I mean, it's pretty important to a lot of people that I know. Um, I think um, a couple years before I won for the short film, um, I think Gus Van Sant won for Milk, which uh, was a movie I was in. Um, so, and Gus is, you know, one of my mentors and filmmakers that I look up to. So the fact that he had won one was very uh, important to me. Um, and I had a student um, who won for his short film um, two years ago. Um, um, and um and i know you know it was very and he he was he's actually from south america but but i taught him at nyu and um so that was um it was very important to him so in you know i i guess among the people i associate with it's it's a it's a big honor